I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic cancer in my right carotid gland. And uh, we were a little bit devastated by that. We were totally devastated. And it was the kind of melanoma that um, it, it, it kills you very quickly. And when we heard the doctors had no hope, they, I mean, they didn't even say radiation and chemo or even immunotherapy or anything to him. They said, there's nothing we can do. Welcome to the crossroads of the known and the unknown. This is AJ Paz, Spiritual Journalist Podcast. Okay, we are here with Anne Archer Butcher and Alden Butcher, her husband, and they have a really interesting story today. It's about a vibrational healing and also about cancer. We're going to talk about that in a little while, but in the meantime, hello, Anne. Hi, hello, hey, Alden. Hey. Hello, AJ. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. I want you to tell us uh, what happened recently and how you got involved with this new technology of vibrational healing, more precisely with the company Monicore USA. Sure, absolutely. Well, um, five year, about five years ago, I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic cancer in my right carotid gland. And uh, we were a little bit devastated by that. We were totally devastated. Um, we had simply noticed that, gosh, he had a few lumps on his neck and we wondered what on earth that was. Uh, I should tell you though, it was exactly where yeah, I would hold my cell phone. I used to have one of those big cell phones from 1985, you know, that looks like a, a field phone for for the army. <laughs> and so uh, that's what I used to communicate on the work that I did. And uh, so we kind of feel like, you know, that radiation had caused that to, to eventually uh, happen. And it, but it was melanoma, and it was the kind of melanoma that um, it, it it kills you very quickly. And when we heard the doctors had no hope, they I mean they didn't even say radiation and chemo or even immunotherapy or anything to him. They said there's nothing we can do. They did offer to do surgery, but they thought that would give him a little more time. And, um, but the, the surgery they described was grueling. Yeah. There's a lot of nerves involved in this part of the the face and the head and so forth. Neck. And the, and the first uh, ear, nose and throat guy that we went to see, he was also a surgeon. He gave the most awful picture of what could happen. I might end up not being able to hear drooling my whole life that my face could be paralyzed and that he couldn't swallow that he'd have to have a feeding tube it went on and on and it's like why would you choose that yeah there's uh, there's all these nerves that are in this area and it's very delicate so we went to see another surgeon at uh, university Harvard educated and tops in his field. He was at UCSD, University of California, San Diego. And he had a more optimistic uh, things to say about the surgery because he was so skilled at it. He said, not on my table, but you may have this, you may have that, you may have this, you may have that. So again, it was still a tale of woe, just not quite as terrible. And Alden said to him, why would I do that? And he said, because it would give you a little bit more time. But what time would that be if you're stuck there healing from surgery and dealing with, you know, immense issues? And Alden, who's never rude, just said, no, not at all. How much yeah. time are we talking about? How much time did they give you? Well, they didn't tell him. He got up to go to the restroom at this point. And he said, I'm not interested in hearing anymore. And he got up and went to the restroom. And while he was gone, the doctor said to me, you know, at most, he only has two months to live. 
<laughs> at most if we eight don't weeks, do anything. eight wow. weeks, we don't do the surgery. If we do it, he might have a couple more months. And it's like, he's not going to pick that a couple of more months of misery. That would be terrible. We'll go for quality of life. And anyway, I said, we know some natural things. So we'll go home and try those. At this point, Alden walked in and the, <laughs> the surgeon looked at him like he felt sorry for him and said, there's nothing you can do at home right. in your pantry is how he said it. There's nothing you can do at home in your pantry that's going to possibly cure this cancer. This is uncurable. This is a disease for which we have no treatment whatsoever. And they were just writing all them off. So, so we left. We trundled home and then we kind of embraced and had a little sad moment. And then we definitely went into, let's deal with this. And so we started thinking about all the things that we knew about natural approaches to healing. You know, we did take that five minutes to cry and hold each other. And, um, and Alden said, you know, I really, I don't mind dying. I'm not afraid of dying. He understood because of our spiritual awareness. He understood what that would really mean. He said, what I don't want is to leave you, which I appreciated. But um, <laughs> this wasn't going to make either one of us happy. And we felt we hadn't finished our mission in this lifetime. We had work to do. We have a new book coming out. And, you know, we hadn't even finished writing it yet. So we talked about that and Alden said, no, there's a lot of things we can do. That doctor just doesn't understand. He doesn't understand natural medicine. And we knew a lot because when our daughter, Sarah, was nine years old, um, she had a, a medical accident. Yes. She was having a little fever or something. So she went to the nurse at the school and the nurse put a thermometer in her mouth and then left the room while Sarah was there with this fell asleep she fell asleep and it turned out to be one of those glass thermometers that has mercury in it and uh she came home and she got extremely sick so we're trying to figure out what it was that happened and she said well there was glass in my mouth and she didn't know about the mercury, though, and she's in the hospital with high fever and the doctors are very worried and they do all kinds of tests and they bring in the CDC, um, the Center for Disease Control out of Atlanta, Georgia, to investigate what was wrong with our daughter. And they came back and the test showed industrial level mercury poisoning. Now, we thought the thermometer that she talked about was a digital thermometer. We never thought mercury. And so we went back to the school to say, why didn't someone tell us? Because this is really serious. They're saying this could kill our daughter. And um, and they said, oh, we understand what happened now. We didn't know. The nurse didn't report it. But she was reported by her neighbors as having a moving van pull up at midnight. And they took all of her furniture and everything away. And she was never seen or heard from again. She didn't even go into the school to get her last paycheck. She just disappeared because she thought she'd killed Sarah. So from that point, we were producers. We started meeting with doctors and we couldn't possibly afford all the doctors that Sarah needed to try and stay alive. So we did a lot of films for them as producers. We'd say, well, let us document what you're doing and you can use it in your clinic. And they said yes. And so we interviewed a lot of people. So we'd learned a lot and we knew a lot of doctors and and we knew about detoxifying the body and how important that is. So we thought that would be the approach that we would use. But we sat down to do a quiet contemplation and ask inwardly, how do we even begin? Where do we even begin with the, with the cancer that's so serious that the doctors are saying there's nothing that they can do? Um, how do we even begin? And Alden opened his eyes and he came up with this very novel approach. Well, <clears throat> the first thing I wanted to do was contact a, a woman who is a consultant to a cancer doctor that we had met earlier. And her name is Tony and uh, called Tony and told her about the situation. And she explained, she said, you know, if you try to fight the cancer, cancer is a very uh, 
negative negative energy and you can't win. So she said, you have to apply love. You have to love. You have to apply the law of love. And she knew that in our in our background, we understood the spiritual laws and we knew that the law of love is a powerful thing. But she said, love is more powerful than power itself. And if you apply love and you can give love um, to yourselves, you might win, Alden. And well, what what you do you do mean that. by what do you mean by giving love to yourselves? Can you explain that? Or what did you do exactly? Well, amongst other things like nutrition and this and that, I every morning I would sing a sacred uh, song that we had learned from our spiritual teachings. You and while I was doing this for 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening, I put my hand here on my cheek and on the cells themselves, and I told them I give, give you permission to return to your normal state. And this is not normal for you guys. You need to you need to think about going back to a state of, of health. health and yeah. healing. So he gave the cells permission to transmute to healthy, strong, thriving cells. And and was he did this, it he did what, it with a lot of love every okay. morning. Was this every was this verbally or with thought? Did you communicate with them? Because if you were singing you, you could not talk, talk to them. You were talking to them verbally, or did you do uh, alternate? Inward. Just inward. Inward. Yeah, telepathically, he was speaking to his cells and giving them okay. permission to be healthy again. And, and you were giving them love how? How are you giving them love? Just energetically. Focusing you know, on it. Focusing on love. And... Uh, you know, mentally giving giving them permission to be their normal, healthy selves. And instead of being upset or angry, you know, it's like your children. If one of your children is errant, you don't try to kill it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go after it and try to destroy that child. You try to bring that child back into the fold with love, back into the family. And that's what he was doing. But he was doing it all telepathically with his eyes closed, chanting this ancient name for God uh, with a lot of love in his focus. And he was seeing himself and, and his cells as healthy and thriving and vibrant. And he was imagining, as he told me, that the tumors were just gone. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we talked to other p people who we knew had ideas about tools for healing and uh, supplements that we could take and what kind of things were they? Well, you know, Alden's diet was one of the things we tried to address because most people with cancer issues, um, they try to go on a keto diet with no sugar and very low carbs. But you can see Alden is a slender man. And once we started that diet, oh my gosh, he lost weight so fast um, because he has a high metabolism. And so he was 15 or 20 pounds down before you could, you know, think twice. And it was like, no, 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 this is this will kill you. What we're doing will kill you. And we knew that it was what they used at all the major cancer clinics. So we had to stop again and think, what do we do? But um, we also knew that one of the things that the doctor said they wish they could use, but they couldn't on him is something called immunotherapy. And they lace immunotherapy with sugar so that the cancer cells will gobble it up. And so whenever he was eating a normal meal, because we let him go back to a completely normal diet, whenever he was eating, we had him take a lot of antioxidants and herbs that we knew that um, helped stop the proliferation of cancer cells. So that might be like garlic. He took burpless garlic pills and, um, and he took... Um, antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E, very particular ones, and minerals like selenium and other things. So every time he ate, he had this little cup of, of nutrients that he took so that we could see that 
you know, as his food was going down and the cancer cells were trying to gobble up that food, that they would gobble up these nutrients that we knew would help stop the proliferation of the cells. But that's not enough for stage four cancer, for sure. It was just, you know, the underpinning. So that that positive thinking that he was doing in science, they call it neuroplasticity. And in neuroplasticity, the concept is that it's kind of the placebo effect, that if you assume you're going to be well, you can help move things toward wellness. If you assume the worst, then you move things toward the worst. And um, so we knew there was a scientific basis for what he was doing when he was chanting this ancient name for God. You could use any word that to you was sacred, but that's what he chose, this ancient name for God. Um, people can find out more about it at hughancientchant.com because it teaches people how to do it because lots of people ask, have asked us about that. And um, so we knew there's a scientific basis for that. There's a scientific basis for the nutrients we were taking, but we felt like we absolutely needed something more. And we had heard about- One of the things that when you go about approaching things in a positive way is that the universe will move to make uh, other things available. And we doors were, will open. And yeah. we we were wondering about uh, machines with energy medicine. And one of the people that we knew who's a PhD, uh, he was into all kinds, all kinds of, kinds of things. And so we we things. called him, and he said, "Well, come by, and I'll show you what I'm using right now." And he had a new machine and it was a, it was a vibrational healing device. Um, you know, there's biofeedback and there's bowl machines. There's all kinds of machines. This one combined all of that. And it not only was diagnostic, but it was able to put vibrations in that should help your immune system to strengthen itself so that the body could heal. This, and this was a, this was how many days later did he start on his own uh, treatment before this, uh, or was this immediately after you were given uh, two months to live? Oh, after we, he was given two months to live, that was at the um, end of October, beginning of November. And, um, and all he did during the month of November was try that diet that didn't work, that made him real skinny, and um and and chant hue to the cells and give them love. And by, by then, December, by then, did he improve any? Were did the tumors? No. Mm -mm. He was there was getting, no change. Okay, he was worse. Um, at this point, he was worse because the diet weakened him so much. So okay. now we've switched the diet by December. In fact, I mean, we're by December we're letting him eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches between meals, just trying to get his weight back up, which is like what cancer cells love, they would gobble up that. But of course we're lacing it like a Trojan horse approach with um, with garlic and vitamin E and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're doing. Then we heard about the machine. Now we're by now we're mid December and we went to this friend's house and you used it maybe two or three times there during the course of two weeks. Yeah, yeah. And then by January, so now it's been since the end of October to January, he, um, this friend said, you know, the doctor who has the rights to this technology in the United States, Dr. Luba is in Newport Beach, um, California. She's no longer there, she's in Vegas. But, um, but at the time we were about an hour away from Newport Beach, hour to hour and a half. So we drove there to see her. And um, I think he was feeling like it was a little bit of liability, but also he wanted to make sure Alden got the best treatment possible. So we went to see her and she continued to use the machine. And in fact, she kind of acted very lighthearted about it all. Like, oh, no worries, Alden, we'll very take casual. care of you. Yeah. yeah, very casual. And And I wondered about that. But later I learned that she had started with this machine, Monocore USA. She had started with it um, working with stage four liver cancer patients. 
And so it's very difficult, you know, that's very difficult um, cancer to deal with, just like Alden's is very difficult, but she had had success after success after success. So that's why she was pretty casual about it because she thought, okay, we got to Alden before he's too sick. He didn't get radiated. He hasn't had any chemo. You know, he's perfect for this machine. So and how, how long did he, did it take for Alden to notice a change or uh, an improvement. For 10 weeks, you notice nothing, right? Yes, true. Yeah, I didn't feel anything, didn't see any change. But and the then, two months that you were given to live had already gone by, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, at least you did that, right? Yeah. Okay, and then, so two, two months after, you were not cured, but you at least were not dead. <laughs> he was actually getting better because he felt stronger but we didn't know if that's because he got his weight back because now he was eating really good food or if it was um if it was the machine we didn't really know but about two months into it right when he should have been not alive anymore according to the surgeon um he looked at me one day and he said do you think these these tumors are smaller than they were before. There's five of them on the side of his neck, all intertwined with his nerves and everything. And I looked and I said, yeah, they do look smaller. And I said, maybe we should mark them with a magic marker so we can see if they're, and he's like, no, no, it's fine. I, I think they're a little tiny bit smaller. And then days went by and he yelled and he was shaving and he said, come in here. And I was frightened. <laughs> But I had good news. I couldn't feel anything there at all. And he said, look at my neck. Look, it's smooth. In fact, it's so smooth. It looked like where all the tumors were, five of them, it looked like five little indents, like somebody had pressed on his skin. And so we don't know anything about cancer. So we want to know, did it go internal? And is that bad? Or did it disappear? Is that good? So we made an appointment with the Harvard surgeon and we went in to see him right away. And as soon as he saw me and looked at my neck, he says, oh my God, what's happened here? And we're like, is it bad? Is it good? What happened? And he goes, you disappeared stage four cancer. How did you do that? And, and then he was just like, I just have to sit down. And he plopped down and he said, what on earth have you done? And I said, remember, we told you we were going to do some natural things. And I said, did that cancer go internal? Are you absolutely sure it didn't go internal? And he goes, no, it doesn't work that way. That was rapidly growing tumors. They go out. And he said, they've disappeared. They've gone away. And, um, and he said, we can do tests, but it doesn't look to me like you have cancer anymore, Alden. And I don't understand it. And he pulled his computer around and he's all ready to type up, you know, and said, tell me exactly what you did. <laughs> yeah, so, so he's there and he can't control his fingers. And... His hands are shaking. <laughs> his hands are shaking like this. And, and we started in telling him what we had done, all the little nuances of everything. And he said, oh, this is beyond my a grade, he said. <laughs> and I said, come on, you're a Harvard-educated surgeon. You understand neuroplasticity. That's where we started. And he goes, no, I cut. I don't understand neuroplasticity. I cut. I'm a surgeon. And I'm like, okay, but you understand antioxidants, and we use those, and you understand vibration, that everything is just molecules in motion. You know that from 11th grade physics, right? That nothing is solid. Everything is just, you know, vibrating molecules. And he goes, I don't understand what you're talking about at all. And he said, um, well, I'm going to have to make an appointment with you with the um, head of oncology, the research oncologist. And he said, she knows everything in this field, and she'll be able to understand what you're talking about. And I said, you really don't know what we're talking about. And he said, no, he said, I've never seen anything like this in my life. And he said, I mean, in all humility, I am the head in this field and I've never heard or seen anything like this in my life. And he said, by rights, Alden, 
You know, I never thought I was going to see you again when you walked out that door. And he said, and now you hit, you sit in front of me healthy and strong and smiling. And he goes, no, it makes no sense to me at all. So he set up that appointment. They did do the blood tests and all the tests. The tr- test came back. The oncologist met with us and she's sitting there just all excited. And all then asked her, what, what was she so excited about? <laughs> you know, I expected this uh oncologist to just be into the traditional uh practice of you know that they're taught and she said well i'm really interested alden because we've never seen anything like this and she said we have the finest minds in the world and we have billions of dollars with a b and she said and we can't do what you did whatever it is you did we cannot do it. We don't know how to do it. And we don't know how you did it. Yeah. And and she said, and I get to document it. <laughs> so she took copious notes. She said, uh, you know, you're really well known around this hospital, Alden. I said, what? <laughs> because of my case. And, and so she took notes and I said to her, why are you so open and and interested in this and she said i feel like i'm sitting in the future of medicine the presence i feel like i'm sitting in the presence of the future of medicine mm-hmm. and i get to interview the future of medicine and say what do we need to learn and and everything we said she wrote down took a large number of notes Uh, We said, how much time do we have? Because we've been talking forever. And she said, all the time in the world, I want to know everything. So she learned about the hue, this ancient name for God, and that vibrational chanting and meditation, contemplation is really good for us. And, And she learned about neuroplasticity and giving love to the cells and love, you know, as the principles go that each, um, each concept is not just a theory it's a law in the universe and we know that the law of love says that love is the most powerful force in the universe exactly like tony had said we believe it and she said oh yes yes i i really am into this and and so she paid attention to all of it the philosophy behind what we were doing even the trojan horse approach that we used for bringing in the presence of antioxidants each time he ate, because she said um, the cancer cells are opportunistic and they want to eat the food first. So as you took a bite of food and you started taking the pills, they want the food and they inadvertently are getting all of the pills that you're taking too, the natural supplements that cancer doesn't necessarily like and that helps slow down the growth. But she said, the granddaddy of what you're doing was obviously this machine. She said, because it would be one thing if you did this over the course of a year, but you did it in 10 weeks or less. You disappeared incurable cancer you cured the incurable okay and I, um i understand that during those 10 weeks there was practically no progress and all of a sudden he was shaving and it had gone so it actually disappeared within days or within hours it looked like someone had come along and vacuumed it away. It just <laughs> disappeared. And it was overnight. I mean, we hadn't noticed it the day before because it was kind of cold. So he had on a heavy sweater. So we didn't look at his neck and we couldn't remember if it was the day before that. But the week before, remember, we were saying they look a little smaller, right? And then days had passed. We didn't know quite how many. And suddenly it's like, wait a minute. They're not only not just getting smaller, they're gone. They're completely gone. Wow. And uh, this happened five years ago, you say? Yes. So uh, this uh, doctor that was so interested, has she done anything with this information? Has she cured other people? Or have you shared this uh, system with other people who have been cured? Or is it only your case? What she had to say was, we can't use what you've done. 
She said, we can't use it yet. She said, if I began to promote what you've done, even though we can see that it worked and I'm very, very excited about it, she said, I would lose my license. And she said, we will have to do years and years of research to back this up before we can begin to use it for other people. In the meantime, Alden went through tests. They discovered he had absolutely no cancer whatsoever. And they even went in and removed some lymph nodes and, and um, he, there was nothing there at all. But because they hadn't known what they were talking about in the beginning, we didn't talk about it for a long time, AJ, because we wanted to know that the cancer didn't come back that this actually was a cure. And you know how they say the three-year rate, the four-year rate, the five-year rate. So we thought, okay, we'll just wait patiently, keep Alden healthy, continue to use the machine. That's the thing that we've continued to apply is the machine. We discovered that instead of going to the doctor's office, even though it costs about $10,000, we could actually own one and we could use it for the rest of our lives at home. Now, what happened in the meantime that really convinced us about the machine because we were doing other things. You know, maybe the neuroplasticity worked. Maybe the antioxidants were more powerful than we think. You know, we didn't know. We knew not, not enough to gauge, even though the, the head of oncology had said, I believe the granddaddy of them all was this machine that you use, this vibrational shift that was created. But what also happened was during this time, my focus was on Alden, but also at the doctor's office, the focus was completely on Alden because they knew that, you know, stage four, they had to really focus and help him get through this and resolve it. But I wanted to use the monocore too. I wanted to hook this thing up to my wrist and sit there and use it as well in the office just to see what it would do for me. So nobody took a history. Nobody knew anything about my background. And um, and I used the monocore. But what they didn't know was that I had contracted malaria a decade ago. And it was the kind that comes back, repeats. It's called recurring malaria. It happens over and over again. The protozoa or whatever it is lives in the liver. And when I would like vacuum the house with too much energy, I would end up with malaria feeling like I've been kicked in the back by a horse, shaking and shivering all over, get a fever, sweating like a pig, have to go to bed, be in bed for days. And it happened over and over and over again during that 10 years. I mean, there was barely a month that I didn't have malaria for 10 years. And we were like, oh my God, it was weakening me and weakening and weakening me. So what happened was that about after Alden's cancer went away, I noticed I haven't had malaria, Alden. And he said, oh, yeah, that's true. That's really good. I'm so glad that you didn't have malaria while we were trying to deal with cancer. That's great. And then the next month goes by and the next month and the next. And I don't have malaria. A year went by and I didn't have malaria. Two years went by, but along about the six month, I'd call Dr. Luba and I said, do you think this machine just inadvertently cured malaria? And I said, I've seen international doctors. Alden has taken me to the best. I've taken all their drugs. I've done everything natural. I couldn't touch it. It was so virulent, so powerful. I couldn't touch it. And um, she says, of course, the machine goes in. It assesses every acupuncture point in your body. And it looked and could see that your liver had a low vibration. That's the malaria. And it would put in the vibration that you need. That's why the monocore is so specific for people. So exciting because it looks at what your body actually needs. And AI determines what vibrations would help you. And it put that in there. And I've, from the first time I've used the monocore, I've never had malaria again, ever. Wow, and great. So let's take a look at the mono, monocore because people, when you first talked to me about this machine, I imagined this huge machine, you know how our uh, imagination is. So let's share. I'm going to be sharing screen. And let's take sure. a look. Let's take a look at some of these pictures. Okay, this is Alan. 
Uh, let me see. Alban, right after his diagnosis. Uh, this was uh, okay. when you guys uh, got married or something, right? You just celebrated your anniversary, by the way. Yep. Yeah, on a cruise there. <laughs> okay. So look, this is the uh, Monocore uh, USA.com page. Okay. So it mentions that it, it is a revolutionary, groundbreaking device. And here we can see what is this? Can you explain this to us? Uh, Alder yeah, that machine, that machine is called the Monocore USA, and it hooks up to a dedicated computer. You only use the computer for the Monocore, the Monocure. Monocore, remember I said it costs about $10,000, but it comes with a computer and everything else that you need, all the cables, yes, like that, everything that you need to hook yourself up to this machine. And then it puts in the vibration based on you doing tests and um, having it assess your body. And that assessment only takes. Uh, it's two minutes. Yeah, two minutes long. And then it gives you a treatment that lasts between 11 minutes and 22 minutes. And then after that, you can program it for other things as well. Okay, in the screen, we can see like uh, the shape of the body. What does that represent? That represents all the acupressure points in the entire body because from head to toe, the monocore is able to assess. It was first developed to use with super athletes like Olympians and to assess everything that was going on. And you see how there's a little hole in the middle that looks like something should go in that little white box. And there's a little gun that goes in there for super athletes. It costs several thousand more, but you can test every muscle in the body and how it's functioning. And um, yeah, see the little crevice there. That's where the little gun goes. But At the top, yeah. you don't have to buy the gun. And we certainly didn't because we weren't interested in treating um, muscles. We were interested in treating the overall body. And that's all you need. This and the computer is all you need to treat the entire body. And you see that little metal plate where that plate is, you can also make remedies. You can take the vibration that's in the machine and you can put it into the remedy. And that's what the doctor did when Alden only went once or twice a week, AJ, you didn't ask that. But when he saw her, he only went to Newport Beach once or twice a week. We went there infrequently because it was a long drive and you know he had cancer and we didn't wanna overwhelm his system and drive too much. And he tried to rest a lot. And she said, twice a week would be sufficient, but you can use it every other day. You can't use it every day because the body needs time to integrate the vibration. But between this machine and the computer, um, that it allows you to have a full treatment for every acupressure point, all the energy systems, and to enhance the immune system. This whole thing is about enhancing the immune system so that the body can heal itself. The what monocord are, okay. heals what, cancer. It doesn't heal any disease. What do you feel when you're using it? Like when you have your uh, cell phone in vibration mode, you feel a light vibration or, or no, what do you feel? No, no sensation at all. Okay. You feel, you feel nothing. This is another uh, picture from the monitor, right? Yeah, that, it's kind of like that. The monitor is a little different. You'll see it on another of the pictures you've got, but it shows you that it's not only checking the acupressure points, it's checking every organ in the body. And so this was where all of them had cancer right here under his ear. That was the parotid gland and it's checking every gland every organ, the circulatory system, the respiratory system, the heart, everything. And it's treating it at the same time by adding the right frequencies, simply adding frequencies to the body. So if a low frequency represents illness, a high frequency at the right acupressure points would, would create healing. That so little, that two minute assessment that the machine does in the beginning tests 700 different acupuncture points. Right. So that blue illustration that you just had up shows that throughout the entire body, 
there is this energy system. I mean, we've all heard of chakra systems. It also balances the chakra systems. And sometimes when you're on the monocore, it might show, you see how you can see the elbow was highlighted there? It might show the elbow and you think, well, there's nothing wrong with my elbow, but it's showing you that energy is blocked there. Not, not because there's something wrong with your elbow, but energy is supposed to flow through the whole body oh. effortlessly. Okay. And it gets stuck depending on emotional responses to things, illnesses that we've had, bacteria and pathogens that build up in the body. All of those things um, can cause the energy to get stuck in various parts of the body. And um, this is the image that you see on the actual monocore. And that blue line, that big blue bar that you see there shows you that the body is able to accept that energy and use it. And um, and it tests, you know, those colors that you see there, it's testing and analyzing and prioritizing exactly what the body needs. And uh, there's words there, you know, like it might say liver or it might say your thyroid gland. And, um, and it might be treating all the thyroid gland, but for me, it might be treating my heart. And so it's individualized. It's different things for different people, but you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to know how to program this. And I learned that when a friend of ours came to visit, this is before we owned a monocore. She came to visit and she was so sick. She's now written a really beautiful testimonial um, about the monocore. She had Epstein-Barr, which is a viral disease. And, and it was making her extremely ill very weak. And she used to work with us, you know, we we're in production and we used to do big productions for 22,000 people. And, you know, on a weekend and it's very exhausting, but you have to be strong and capable. And she was right there with us the whole time. And now she could barely lift a finger. So I said, you know, I'll take you to see Dr. Luba. We'll drive well, course, up. Uh, the medicos were chasing this with drugs and with, you know, almost down to bloodletting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were doing everything they could to try and help her. And she was even seeing natural doctors. At this point, she was seeing a naturopath. She was doing far infrared. She was doing IV drip. She was doing high levels of nutrition, doing everything she could. But I said, you need to see Dr. Luba. Let's go see Dr. Luba. So we drove to um, Newport Beach. We saw Dr. Luba. Dr. Luba did an assessment of her. And she came back and she said, Ann, you need to borrow a monocore and take it home. And I said, I don't know how to run it. I don't know what to do. And she said, it's easy. I'll teach you on the phone. That's when I realized we could own one that we could, because I had never even looked at the computer screen. I never even saw what you see here because, you know, when you're being treated, that screen is turned away from you and you're just sitting there reading a book. And so I'd never noticed any of this. And so she sends us home with this machine. We get on the phone and she has us, you see that little point on the wrist there that's a circle red with yellow. That's a universal acupressure point. And she had us put the electrodes on those two points, test my friend Sheila, and then um, run AI. And then she had us run various, various viruses and she showed me how to do that. And she said, okay, so what will happen here is every single acupressure point everywhere in the body, from your hand to your full torso, right down to your toes, every single point will get treated and let's see how she is. And since my friend was only here for 10 days and she had to go home, um, Dr. Luba said, go ahead and treat her for 10 days solid. Now that's the most you should use the machine, 10 days to two weeks solid. And then you have to take 10, at least 10 days to two weeks off because the body has to have time to process the energy. But she did that. Now, before she came to our house, Sheila had gone and had her blood tested and the Epstein-Barr was sky high, this virus. When she went home after using the monocore, when she went home and they did blood tests, um, they said, what have you done? We've been after this for over a year and now all the Epstein bar is gone. And this is exactly what Sheila did. She simply used the monocore with the dedicated computer with me operating it easily um, for 10 days in a row, no more than two hours at a time, sometimes an hour and a half. And um, she went home and she had no more Epstein bar. 
So you hook yeah. it up to, uh, to your wrists, right? Yeah. Just like we right. see in the picture. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah. You do, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. And it, and it, it, it covers all the acupressure points, the acupuncture. Yes. Points, right. And it comes with one page of instructions that take you step by step through the over 20 steps that you use to treat the entire body, no matter what you have, including it was the exact same treatment for Alden with cancer. And Dr. Luba has programmed in very precise instructions and can help people with whatever they have. But for all of us, she says, we've all been exposed to parasites. We've all been exposed to bacteria and viruses, and those have to be cleared out first. And so that's what you do. You go through this whole laundry list of things. And then you can also um, treat various um, issues that you might be having by putting in the right vibration. And, you know, you, you can see exactly what it is. If you follow her instructions, it's quite easy. All just to increase the immune system response. So the body can heal itself. Okay, we're getting to the end of this uh, broadcast, but uh, this is the uh, website, monicoreusa.com. Uh, people can find more information there, right? Yes, of course. If someone wants to contact you and ask you something, or maybe there's someone with cancer, where can he that person get more information? You know, if they go to monicoreusa.com and they put our names in, then Monocor um, customer service will actually send those messages on to us. We've gotten several because when we decided to talk about it, um, we we are speakers. We've spoken all over the world. We're producers. You know, we're known all over, and um, and so lots of people watch the broadcast and they wanted to learn more. And that's exactly how they've done it. Is just reach us through MonocorUSA.com and. And, you know, we're happy to talk about it because obviously Alden's doing great. We're happy. We're very grateful. You know, when when he was practicing being um, giving love, he also watched funny movies and laughed and we went for walks in nature. And that is also healing. You know, even if a person can't afford um, a monocore, you know, at ten thousand dollars, if you can't afford the machine, you can give yourself the first stage of what Alden did, which is also very healing. Give love to your body, to every cell in your body. Practice being happy. Watch funny movies. Go for walks in nature. You know, smile a lot. It's very healing. And AJ, um, Dr. Luba is no longer treating patients like she did for me. But she retired. There are doctors who are setting up the monocore in their clinics. Okay, so uh, people don't have to actually buy one. They can go to a clinic and receive treatment, right? Which is There's only a few clinics in the United States that are doing that right now and they're just getting started, but yes, it's been it's been accepted now in a couple of cancer clinics and um in Minneapolis, I know for sure, and in um Idaho, there's one What about the FDA? Does the FDA approve this? And in Wisconsin, it's FDA registered and it's made in the United States of America. So, yes. Okay, great. So uh, one thing that you mentioned was that I think, I don't know if it was this doctor that uh, treated Alden, but he said, look, if you cannot afford it, you have your own monocore in your body, right? Can you that was Dr. That? Luba. She said, you know, I know some people can't really afford the machine. Um, but what I like to tell people, because it's true, is that she said, you do have that vibrational healing potential inside of you. And if you can give love to yourselves like Alden did, if you can think happy thoughts, if you can keep yourself from focusing on the negative and instead focus on the positive, if you can do things that you love, and you can stop complaining that those things are very healing. And you can tell your body, okay, I got it. We're going to heal you. We're going to find a way. Don't you worry. And you begin to take charge of your cells. Your cells are listening and they will respond. So the Beatles were right when they said, all you need is love. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good, AJ. That was great. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. And I think... 
a lot of people are going to be very interested in learning more. And uh, I hope this helps a lot of people who are watching. And we do. thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. AJ. Happy to be here. This has been the AJ Parr Spiritual Journalist Podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe.